In my last video, I used the Raspberry Pi Pico as a modjip for the GameCube, showing what a versatile little guy the Pico truly is. Today, by complete chance, we have another video featuring the green little plugger. Today, the Pico will be modding the original PlayStation, but this time in soft mod form. The Pico mem card has been created by a GitHub user, Dan Gaiu, who resides in Italy. Utilizing the Pico, it's designed as a modern replacement for the PlayStation's memory card. Using the USB transfer capabilities of the Pico, save files can easily be imported and exported. Additionally, exploits like free PSX boot can also be applied. This is what I'm more personally interested in since none of my PS1s are modded. I don't have much use transferring saved game files otherwise, but it's a feature I might find useful in the future. Regardless, the Pico mem card should be compatible with every model of PlayStation. There are several ways to build a Pico mem card. One method is to solder a Pico directly to a memory card's pins. You could alternatively use a controller plug, since both the controller and memory card connect to the same bus, but you would lose the ability to plug in two controllers if you did. If you're really desperate, you could even solder the Pico directly to the PlayStation itself, although neither of these options are particularly clean. I went with the next option, a custom PCB designed specifically to interface the Pico with the PlayStation's memory card slot. Dagao is selling these, and he's created a Google form where you can place an order for a reasonable price. So I did exactly that. With that in mind, the bill of materials is quite simple. Here is the PCB, and obviously you need a Raspberry Pi Pico. Easy! Soldering the Pico to the PCB is straightforward, but it does need to be flush so nothing scrapes along the ceiling of the memory card slot. This means that headers or anything else through hole can't be used, and that the Pico is soldered flat to the top of the PCB. To begin, I used elastic bands to hold the Pico in place, lining it up with markings on the PCB. After soldering a few pads at each corner to anchor the Pico, I went to town soldering each pad. Because it's sitting flush, enough solder does need to be added, so that's a solid connection from the Pico down to the PCB. You do need to be wary of cold joints however, so be tactful. Flipping it over once I was done, solder had come through a number of the vias, so cleanup was necessary with desoldering braid. Remember, the bottom needs to be flush in order to fit properly in the memory card slot. Otherwise, I checked all the connections for cold joints from the Pico to the PCB with a multimeter, and once I was satisfied, it was time to load the firmware. Head to GitHub, linked below, and download the latest release. The file we need is named picomemcard.uf2. Plug the Pico into your computer while holding down its boot cell button. This will open the Pico in File Explorer. Transfer the file you just downloaded onto it, and it will appear as a USB flash drive. If you head to the Docs folder of the GitHub and then the Images folder, you'll find a sample memory card file. Copy this across to use as a test. Be mindful of the file naming, however. Any file that is transferred to the Pico needs to be named exactly memcard.mcr no matter what it is, or it won't work. Images must also be exactly 128 kilobytes in size, which is the capacity of an original memory card. Furthermore, once file transfer is complete, the Pico must be safely ejected, or the data won't be correctly written to the Pico. But with that out of the way, let's plug it in. It's inserted upside down, because there wouldn't be enough clearance to fit the Pico in otherwise. It's at this point, I should mention that the developer recommends never plugging the Pico into USB power, while the PS1 is also powered on. This is because there is a risk that the 5V power from the USB could connect to the 3.3V rail of the PlayStation. I instantly noticed how difficult it was to keep the PCB connected, there's nothing to support itself within the slot. The developer is using folded up pieces of paper as a spacer and photos on the GitHub, but does mention that he's working on a proper 3D printed enclosure. That wasn't ready as of making this video however, so I designed my own. The first port of call was an original memory card. Figuring out the intricacies of the case design was key in designing my own. I got to work measuring, even having to pull out the protractor because of the truncated portions. But boy, I did not foresee how complex these cases were. I started by prototyping the very end portion that plugs in that is divided between two halves. Long story short, I aced the piece that slots in along the ceiling of the memory card slot, but struggled with the lower portion. This led to a bit of a light bulb moment however, when I realised it wasn't necessary to be a one to one replica. Just that first half was enough to hold the PCB in place in the slot, so I decided to design the rest of the enclosure around that. Here is the end result. Two pieces slot and screw into each other using 5mm M3 screws, and one of the halves includes posts to hold the PCB in position. Fairly basic, but as you can see, it's most definitely functional. I've made the STL files freely available for download, a link can be found in the description. 
Now that it was more convenient to use, I checked out Free PSX Boot. This is a soft mod exploit designed specifically to run on PS1 memory cards. It's very similar to Free McBoot on the PS2 I covered a few months ago. The GitHub for this project can also be found in the description. To begin, you'll need to decide which memory card slot you'll want to use. Personally, slot 2 makes much more sense to run the exploit, while slot 1 stays on actual memory card duties. Next, scroll down to the download section and find the model of your PS1. Download the file, but remember, any file that is copied to the Pico needs to be named exactly memcard.mcr in order to work. After you've done that, insert it into slot 2 and power on the PS1 with the lid open. Navigate to the memory card manager and the exploit should begin. Once the interface is loaded, insert a burnt disk, close the lid and press R1 to initiate the game. I tried out a few notoriously expensive games, sorry not sorry, and it worked like a charm. Excellent. You might be wondering if you can load up multiple images on the Pico at the same time however, and for the time being, the answer to that is no. I had to remove the sample memory card image for free PSX boot. Whoa, wait a minute. This video nearly became out of date before it was even released. I was about to say that the developer was working on a future SD card expansion, but just as I was finishing the script, they came through with the goods. They've also released another PCB that supports the RP2040 as well. I am interested in trying out the SD card expansion, but that will have to be for another video. But overall, I'm impressed with this project and look forward to checking it out further. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.